St. George's, and we need all hands on deck to talk about what's happening and all, and all that good stuff, including electing uh, new members of the vestry. So please be here at 9 o'clock uh, next week in the, uh, in the church building. Um, also, Backpack Buddies will be meeting this Thursday. If you want to be involved in a ministry, and you are free at this time of day on Thursday, you're not every two weeks, it is an incredible experience. It uh, does such good for the community. It is a fun time of fellowship and laughter and some pretty easy work. So please, come be part of that. If you're looking for something to do, and there's something for everyone, even if uh, you're not a person who wants to walk around the table filling the bags, we have boxes to break down and all kinds of good stuff. Um, a couple uh, uh, other pieces of news. Uh, I'm so excited to be able to tell you that our bishop will be with us on Easter Day. This is a huge deal to get the bishop for Easter. We're going to have a great uh, experience, I know. She will be doing baptisms, confirmation, reaffirmation, reception. If you are interested in any of those sacraments, please see me as soon as possible so we can get the paperwork done. Get her the names and get y'all set up for that. And uh, now I'd like to ask Jeff to uh, come forward and make an announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, some of you have already heard, but in case you haven't, um, I am retiring uh, in my church ministry. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, effective uh, April Fool's Day. <laughs> so I'll be with you a while longer. Um, and I'll continue as a chaplain uh, when and where and how. And, uh, you know, the context is something I'm in discernment about. And so you, you can pray for me. But I will say this that um, however I continue in ministry, um, that I am so equipped by the support and the encouragement that I have received from the leadership here and from all of our vestry members over the past few years and, and wardens and, uh, and Deacon Karen and Ward and Father Chris and Father Mike um, I, and Diane. I've just been so built up that God has must have something really big in mind. So pray for me during this time. But this is just to say thank you. Thank you for encouraging me and supporting me and my family. Stephanie's ministry won't change. She's full-time with the grandkids, you know. So <laughs> you know, we're offering a free CDL if you'll commit to driving a truck. And I tried to get her to drive a truck, you know, and, but anyhow, it was not effective in that appeal. 
But uh, uh, she's full time with the grandkids, and, and I'm kind of in discernment a bit, but I'll continue as a chaplain for sure. Thank you for your support to me and to my ministry at Seafarers, and uh, my ministry's here. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Oh, thank uh, you. We're going to be able to uh, leave uh, product here for the Seafarers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. De definitely. Uh, yeah, and I don't know uh, how how long I'll be with the Seafarers or anywhere else. Uh, right now, I'm truly in discernment. So he may get that CD out. I might get the CD. <laughs> <laughs> you probably always can use a lumper. You could be the lumper. Okay. Okay. You have to explain that later, but I will. <laughs> I do want you all to know that uh, Jeff's last Sunday with us will be the 19th of March, and we will have an opportunity to gather together and celebrate Jeff's ministry. And so uh, just watch for details about that. The one thing, uh, you know, I will miss working with Jeff. Uh, Jeff, you're a delight to work with. Your sense of humor is wonderful. And we are going to need, I'm going to put a sign-up sheet out there for at least three people who will come and just leave coffee cups randomly around. The <laughs> because I don't know if I can handle Jeff being gone and finding coffee cups everywhere. Actually, I found what I was looking for. It was behind the altar. And it's not because I'm a short timer that I'm going to start drinking coffee while presiding, but um, it was truly an accident. But it's so funny. Maybe I could. People, yes. people come and go, hey, I've got a coffee cup. You know <laughs> whose is it? Almost certainly Jeff's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's prepare for work. <laughs>
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He said, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, the one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's psalm, 40, we do it in verses 1 through 8, not 1 through 12.
and those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, all of these saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Praise to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare our hearts to hear the reading of the Holy Gospel, we stand and sing our sequence hymn, number 131, verses 3 and 5. Translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. When does someone become a Christian? As Episcopalians, we do uh, practice infant baptism. It's been done since the very earliest years of the church. And so you have children sometimes as young as eight days old get baptized. And people ask, you know, well, are they a Christian then? And the answer, of course, is yes, they are a Christian. The, the uh, celebrant takes the holy oil, the chrism, blessed by the bishop, and makes the sign of the cross on the forehead they say, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. You are Christ's own. But then occasionally I'll have friends, usually those who don't do infant baptism, ask me, well, what if this child was never brought to a church again? Would this child still be a Christian? And I would answer them, well, yes, they would be a Christian, but of course they would not have lived into the fullness of what that life means. Because again, Christianity is a faith learned on the road. It doesn't really matter when you begin, whether it's in infancy or whether it's five years old or 20 years old or 80 years old. What matters is getting on the road and staying on the road. You remember that story, don't you? 70 people, 70 disciples had been following Jesus around. And they were watching Jesus preach, teach, and heal. He was doing all of these things, and these people were watching. And Jesus puts, comes up one day and he says, now it's your turn. I want you to go on the road. Don't take a staff. Don't take an extra cloak. Don't take money. I want you to go out and preach, teach, and heal. And that's exactly what they do. And they come back and they say, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Now, we might not preach, teach, heal, and cast out demons, but we are nevertheless called to learn, our, to, to learn the Christian life by living the Christian life. And what does that mean? It means, as the Catechism in the Book of Common Prayer says, to work, pray, and give for the spread of the kingdom of God. It's in doing it that we get better at it. I remember that when I started teaching economics at Trident Tech, it was 30 years since I graduated with my degree. I hadn't taught economics in 30 years. How did I do it? I started out, I looked at the book, I remembered some things, and you know what? After a while, I became pretty good at it. It's the same way with being a Christian, but you've got to get on the road and work, pray, and give. You've got to find your ministry. It may be something magnificent, it may be humble, but the body of Christ is composed of many parts, and whatever member you are, your work is absolutely vital. The church has a word for this. It's called sanctification. That is, as you put your hands in God's hands and you go forth and do the ministry he gives you, as you keep praying for grace because we only do it by the grace of God, as you keep doing these things, you are transformed more and more. Sanctification means being made holy. The Eastern Christians have an even stronger word for it. They use the word deification. Deification means to become like God. And that may sound a bit, uh, a, a bit dramatic and, uh, and uh, like a lot to aim for, but remember, Jesus is the perfect reflection of the Father, and we are called to be Christ-like. And so we are called. Now we have to get on the road, though. And that means if you're not on the road, if you don't have a regular prayer life, 
It's important for your sake and for the sake of your brothers and sisters to develop one. If you don't have a ministry that you're engaged in, it's important for yourself, for the kingdom of God, and for your brothers and sisters to find what that might be and to engage in it, no matter what it is. Now, I want to address one other factor about being on this journey, being on the road. You know, uh, I, I don't think I look particularly like a priest. I mean, I wear the clothes and all that, but uh, in summertime when I go to Big B, my other church, Big B Coffee, uh, and I'm sitting there, I usually have uh, my normal garb, which is a Hawaiian shirt. Uh, my, uh, if, if I'm lucky, it's my parrot shirt. It's, it's just a thing of beauty. I have to change the batteries about once a month. But it's gorgeous. And I have my shorts on, okay? And you may not know this about your priests, but I have a lot of tattoos on my legs, okay? It is acceptable, trust me. But, uh, but anyway... Uh, and so people see me, and they don't, they don't really think, they don't go, you know, that guy's a priest. And so they start talking to me. And after they start talking for a while, they'll often, you know, say, well, what do you do? And now it's too late for them to unsay anything they said. <laughs> and so I say, well, actually, I'm an Episcopal priest. And they usually kind of look at those tattoos again, and, and uh, really? I go, yeah. I said, are, are you a Christian? And they'll say, well, you know, I used to be. I used to be, I go, what, 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 what made you change? And a lot of times it'll be some kind of a hurt they suffered. You know, maybe they were very active in their church and they did a lot for others. And when it came time for their being cared for, they weren't cared for. Other times something was changed in, in the church or in the service that just rubbed them so the wrong way they felt unvalued. And, and there are all these reasons, you know, this, this journey we walk the sides are littered with people who left the church because of some hurt or pain or misunderstanding. But I want to tell you something about that, okay? First off, there's no way to avoid it. There's no way to avoid it. People say sometimes, yeah, I left because they're all hypocrites. And I'm like, you're right. Mm -hmm. And I'm a hypocrite too. Because I try my best to do what I can. But when I fail, when I screw up, when I don't help someone like I should, or when I don't talk as gently as I should. I judge myself by my motivation, which was good. But when someone else does it, I judge them by their actions. So you're right. I'm a hypocrite. But by the grace of God, God will overcome that. And he will make me stronger. Richard Rohr is one of my favorite preachers. He's a Catholic uh, Franciscan. And he was at a uh, friary, a gathering, uh, or a place where friars are. Uh, and... Uh, one of the brothers, a non-ordained brother, they, they're called fathers if they're ordained, brothers if they're not, and one of the brothers, it was his turn to do the sermon, and he was a pretty simple man, and he got up there and he said, God calls us into service to care for one another, and also because he knows we'll be heard. Preacher was like, he knows we'll be heard? What? That doesn't make any sense at all. But then as he went on, he said, God doesn't want you to be hurt, but he knows that when we act together, when we do ministry together, we're going to get hurt somehow because we're with other human beings. It's just like marriage. You're going to get hurt. But the thing to do is to keep working, keep on that road, keep praying for wholeness, and become more humble, be willing to forgive freely, and be willing to ask for forgiveness humbly. So this is the road that we're called to be on. It's a road where we learn the faith, where we are being formed more and more into the image of God. And the weird thing about it is the more Christ-like you become, the less you feel holy because you know how far you have to go. But it's still a wonderful thing because you know the presence of God and you have this wonderful community. And once people, once people learn to forgive and to ask for forgiveness, then nothing can shake that family of faith. So brothers and sisters, if you have a strong prayer life, I applaud that. If you don't, start. If you need help, come see me. I'm happy to give you some help on that. If you have a ministry, God bless you and keep doing it. If you don't, come see me and I might have some ideas. It won't involve preaching, by the way. <laughs> might be leaving coffee cups around. <laughs> but but be, be on the road. Claim the journey as your own. And God will bless you in that journey. In Jesus' name, 
Standing together we now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed yeah. on page 358. We believe in one God. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Confess our sins against you. By our word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors or ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we do not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.